Hello, I'm Joseph, this is Echo Nova, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at Photoshop's toolbar. The toolbar by default is located down the left hand side. If the tool has a triangle in the bottom right hand corner, that means you can right click it and it will give you an extra tool. Now our first tool is the move tool and the shortcut can be found by hitting V on your keyboard. If you hit shift V, you can cycle through both tools. The move tool allows you to move the layer that you have selected. So down here I have my background layer. And if I click and hold on the screen, I can then move that layer around. If I wanted to move my text layer, I would click on my text layer and then I would be able to move that around. If we right click our move tool, we get the artboard tool. This allows you to create artboards. If we duplicate our artboard, we can make changes to one of them and compare them. Next up we have the marquee tool. This allows you to select an area of an image. We'll just go over the rectangle one right now. If I click and drag it will highlight an area and then I can move that area around or if I go to the move tool I can move that part of the image around. The elliptical marquee tool is much the same. It's just in a circle. Next up we have another way of selecting an area. This is the lasso tool. So if you click on this and you click and drag, you can highlight an area just like that. Or if you use the polygonal lasso tool, you can click each point selecting an area like that. Next up we have a couple of types of auto selecting. One is the magic wand tool click on an area it will select all the pixels that are very similar to it. You can change that amount by changing the tolerance. Just like that. If we right click on that we get the object selection tool which when it works will highlight an entire object in an image. Ooh. Below that we have the crop tool. And this allows you to crop an image. enter. What a silly face. And below that we have the frame tool which is something that I never really use. It allows you to create a frame that then creates a smart object. So if you click the smart object here you can move the image within it. Or if you click here you can move the actual frame. Might need it. Next up we have the eyedropper tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is just I. This allows you to pick a color from your image and then you can see it up here. So then you can use it. Very useful for painting. Next up we'll have a look at the red eye tool. If you take a picture of someone and their pupils are red, this is a great tool for that. You just zoom in on the eye and then highlight it. Didn't really need it here, but there you go. On the same tool space we have the patch tool, which can be used for sorting out a wonky hairline. weird but you might need it and of course the brush tool which requires its own video you can change the shape and size of your brush here also we have the pencil tool which is the same but without the anti-aliasing see underneath that we have the clone stamp tool which is really hard to say but very useful you can see here we've got a little bit of weirdness going on with my artificial blurred background. We grab the clone stamp tool <laughs> and then alt click on a bit which isn't so weird and then go down a little bit. You can sort of just move, move stuff around. Maybe we'll move this up. And it can just give you a slightly cleaner edge. Now we have the history brush which essentially undoes what we just did. We go down here and rub the history brush over it, just undoes it. Cool way. Eh? Now we have our eraser tools. You can do it manually. Or you can do it with a click of a button with the magic eraser tool. The magic sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. The paint bucket tool. This can be used to fill large areas. We make a selection here. 
and go to the paint bucket tool, we can fill that in. You also have your gradient tool here. You make another selection and we can make a gradient in there. Lovely. Do you like to blur, sharpen or smudge things? You're in luck. That's what we've got here. The blur tool allows you to blur things. The sharpen tool allows you to sharpen them up. And the smudge tool, well, this allows you to smudge things. And occasionally create monstrosities. It's also a good way to blend two colors. Do you want to make a color brighter, darker, or remove it completely? Well, we've got you covered again. The dodge tool allows you to brighten up colors. The burn tool allows you to darken them. And the sponge tool gets rid of color altogether. Ah! The pen tool is extremely useful for creating paths. Now you can manually sort of go around an image We'll just do that for now. Add an anchor point using the add anchor point tool in the pen tool section. We'll add an anchor point. This adds a curved anchor point. So now we can sort of cut this section out manually. If we right click and go to make selection. We now have that selected or there's lots of other things you can do with paths like type on them or add a stroke to them. Ah, the classic text tool. You can hit T on your keyboard to find it, or you can just click down here. Now, you can click and drag to type in an area, or you can just click on the screen, and then you can type. If you have a path like this, you can use the path selection tool to select the whole path, or the direct selection tool to select individual points on the path. Want to make a shape? Let's make a shape. We got rectangle, ellipse, triangle, polygon, line, and custom shape tool. Let's grab a custom shape. Here is a boat. Click and drag. And we have our boat. Up here you can choose if it has a stroke or not. Or a fill. There you go. So you make shapes. The next tool is used to rotate your canvas. Want to be upside down? You can be upside down. You can change the exact degree here. 180. Reset. Done. Finally, we have our zoom tool. Press set on the keyboard or click down here. Click and drag to zoom. Right click to fit on screen. And we're done. Oh, and below that, you can edit your toolbar if you click here. Decide what goes on it. You can also switch your colors here if you didn't want to switch them here. This button makes a quick mask and this button just switches between views. You can also hit F on your keyboard. Just like that. <coughs> I am way too ill for this. Have a lovely day. Underneath the brush tool, we have the clone tamp. Underneath that, we have the clone stamp tool. Underneath that, we have the clone stamp tool. <laughs> Why is that so hard to say? Underneath that, we have the clone stamp stool tool.